In this video, we will learn how to solve two-step linear equations. So two-step linear equations are equations that take two steps to solve, hence their name. And really the trickiest part about solving two-step equations is understanding how, how to actually solve these and which step to undo first. So most students are able to look at the two problems that you see here on the screen, and they can see that there's an addition of 10 here, so you can see that plus sign in there. And then there's a multiplication taking place in here when these two items are smushed together. So most kids know that there's a multiplication and an addition that need to be undone. The tricky part is that they don't know what to undo first. And in order to really successfully do this and get in the habit of knowing what's going to be undone first, you have to take a look at your order of operations. So if you remember from previous math courses, in the order of operations, parentheses come first, exponents come second, multiplication and division come together on one level third, and then addition and subtraction come together on one level fourth. And remember, multiplication and division go left to right, and addition and subtraction go left to right. So when we're looking at what to undo first, we need to first think about the order of operations happening on the side with x. So we're really going to ignore the 40 part right now, and we're going to focus on just the left-hand side of each of these equations. Now, the easiest way to solve an equation, if you don't know what to do, is write out the order of operations and undo it backwards in reverse. So until you get the hang of what to do when, I like to have kids write out their order of operations for the problem they see. So if I look at this problem on the left, what I start off doing is I say, okay, there's no parentheses, so I don't need to undo a parenthesis, so that's not in my order of operations. There's no exponents, so I don't need to undo my exponents here. Then the next thing I see is multiplication and division. And while I don't have division, I do have a multiplication. So in my list of order of operations, I would do multiplied by 5. And then I look next and I see an addition, so I would do add 10. So that's my order of operations for that problem there on the left. If I then go through this same process on the right, it's going to look a little bit different. So again, I'm going to do order of operations here. When I start off again, I look at parentheses, and I look at this problem, and I think, oh, hey, I do have parentheses. I have a plus 10 happening inside of parentheses. So I like to note that there is I have a plus 10, and it's coming first in my list this time because of the parentheses. I don't have an exponent in this problem, so I can ignore that. Then I see multiplication and division. Well, I do have a multiplication of 10, so I'm taking care of that. And then addition and subtraction. While I do have an addition of 10, I've already taken care of that with my parentheses. So what you notice here with these problems is that the order of operations for these two problems is opposite of each other. And that's because of the way the problem is written and how one contains parentheses and one doesn't. Now, to solve these, all we need to do is undo our order of operations in reverse. So the opposite of adding 10 is subtracting 10. That makes something 0. So if I subtract 10 from each side, this side, they undo each other, and we're just left with 5x. And on the left-hand side, we have 30. Then to undo a multiplication of 5, we divide by 5. Those 5s undo each other because 5 divided by 5 is 1, so we're left with x is equal to 6. Now, if we apply this same type of thinking on the right-hand side, we're going to undo our order of operations in reverse. So we multiplied by 5, so we're going to undo that by using division, again, because 5 divided by 5 is 1. Then we have x plus 10 is equal to 8. Now we need to undo that addition of 10 by subtracting 10. That becomes 0, so we have x is equal to negative 2. So depending on your level and your knowledge of math and how comfortable you are with two-step equations, some of you may need to write out the order of operations and undo them physically on paper like we did right here. And some of you may know the steps that you need to take given the problem. So it kind of depends on your level of math and your level of comfortability with two-step equations. So now let's take a look at another set of problems. If you look closely at these, you will notice that we have a division of 4, that's what's going on here with this line, and then we have a subtraction in each problem. The only difference is the placement of that subtraction of 2. In the problem on the left, it's placed kind of next to the fraction, and in the problem on the right, the negative 2 is a part of the fraction. 
So here, one thing that mathematicians imply and think you automatically know is if something is on top of a fraction together, there are some implied parentheses there. So you see the x minus 2, and in math world, we assume that you know there are implied built-in parentheses around that. So I like to add these in so I don't forget that when I list out my order of operations. Then from here, we're going to actually list out our order of operations for each problem. So here on the left-hand side, um, I'm going to start with my parentheses. In the problem on the left over here, I don't have any parentheses. I don't have any exponents. Multiplication and division are the next level, and I see that I have a division of 4, so that comes next. And then I have addition and subtraction. I see a subtraction of 2, so that would come next. Now to solve this problem on the left, I just undo these in reverse. So the opposite of subtraction is addition. So I start by adding 2 to each side. And then I have to undo division, so I multiply. So we end up with x is equal to negative 24. Now, if I look at this second problem over here, again, I start off with the parentheses here, and I notice that this problem has parentheses. There is a subtraction of 2 within the parentheses. So I'm going to do a subtraction of 2 first in my order of operations list. There's no exponents. Multiplication and division, I can see I have a division of 4 taking place. And then addition and subtraction, I already took care of. There's no more because the 1 was in parentheses. So here, again, we undo in reverse. So I start by multiplying both sides by 4. Those undo each other because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I have x minus 2 equals negative 32. And we then add 2 to each side. So we get x is equal to negative 30. This final example here is one of the most tricky examples that exists with two-step equations. So I want to talk through it really quick so you kind of know how to approach it if you see it. The first thing that gets very tricky is when your x is being subtracted here. So if it was, you know, minus 2x or minus 4x or whatever it might be, it gets really tricky because of that minus there. And you have to be really, really careful with how you deal with that. The second piece of why this one is tricky is there is not a coefficient or a number in front of the x. When there is not a number in front of the x, there is actually an implied one there. So I like to go ahead and write in that implied one so that I don't get confused and accidentally miss it towards the end. The second thing I do in a problem that's subtracting anything with x where I know I'm going to need to work with that is I like to use keep change change to turn this subtraction problem into an addition problem that is equivalent. So keep change change, we leave the 4 alone, we change this to addition, and then we make this a negative one. So really this, we are turning it into 4 plus negative 1x equals 12. And that is an equivalent statement to what we originally saw, but this now will help prevent us from making an error as we try to solve this equation. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to write out the order of operations here and undo this backwards so you can see and maybe pick apart for yourself how this was confusing and then use it to make sure you don't make similar mistakes in the future. So first thing we're going to do is look for parentheses. And when I look at this problem, I see no parentheses, so I don't need to worry about it. I then look for exponents. I don't see any. I then look for multiplication and division. And in this problem, I am seeing a multiplication right here of negative 1. So that's going to come first in my order of operations list. Then from here, I don't see any more multiplication and division, so I'm going to look at addition and subtraction. And I see that I have a plus 4 here. Now, if this was something like a negative 4, you would either write that as plus negative 4 or minus 4 because it, all the 4 takes the sign of whatever is in front of it. So because there's not a sign here, we can imply that this is a plus 4. Even though there was subtraction here to start with, it is a plus 4 that we need to undo. So now we're going to work on undoing these in reverse. So the opposite of plus 4 is minus 4. So what you should see as you work on this problem is you should see, okay, I have a positive 4 and I'm subtracting 4 from it. Those become 0. So you have negative 1x equals 8. And then from here, we can use division to undo that negative 1. So we end up with x is negative 8. 
Now, if you're unsure, if you're like, Mrs. Conway, I don't know if that answer is right. What you can do is you can actually plug this back in and check it. So our original problem was four minus X equals 12. Okay, if this is the correct answer, if we put that negative eight in place of X, it should make this equation true. So if we have four minus X is negative eight equals 12, we're gonna check and see, is this true or not? Well, four minus negative eight, if we're using keep change change, becomes four, you would do change change, so it'd be four plus eight, which is in fact 12.